This video will provide you an explanation on how to divide decimals. Please make sure you have your classwork notebook out and take all relevant notes as well as write down all problems that are part of this review so that you have them for future reference. The two absolutes when it comes to dividing decimals are you need to create a fraction out of the division problem if it's not already in the fraction format and then you need to actually remove the decimals before you get started. So those are the two things that are listed in the gray. In the blue are all of the notes. I will read through all of them and then we will go through several examples after we have done this. Please pause this video as necessary and write down whatever steps you need as you're going through this. The first step is to understand that the first number in the division problem is called, will become the numerator and the second number will become the denominator. You want to put them together and make a fraction with the first number on top and the second number on the bottom. The next step is that you want to even out all of your numbers. For example, if your numerator only has one decimal and your denominator has two, you want to fill in a zero at the end of your numerator's numbers so that you have two numbers past the decimal on the top and two numbers past the decimal on the bottom. A question you need to think about is how many decimal places do you have? If you have one decimal place, then your giant one will be a 10 over 10. If you have two, your giant one will be 100 over 100. If you had three, it would be 1,000 over 1,000, and so on and so forth. The number of zeros is the number of decimal places. The next step would be to multiply your new fraction by a giant one. This is going to remove your decimal. Then you want to simply Simplify your fraction using long division or simple reduction and then long division. Let's try a few examples. Okay, so let's give this a try. So the first step in our directions was to take our number sentence and turn it into a fraction. So that means the 9.2 is going to be on top and the 3.6 is going to be on the bottom. So then we asked ourselves a question, the question being how many decimal places do we have on the top and on the bottom? You can see there's one on each, so we do not need to add any additional zeros to make the two decimal places equivalent. The next thing we need to do is multiply by a giant one. So how many decimal places do we have? We have one decimal place, so that means we are gonna multiply by a 10 over 10 as our giant one. You are doing this, again, to remove the decimal. After the multiplication, what you end up with is 92 over 36. I'm going to make a guess that that's going to go in two times. I'm going to do my math on the side just to double check. 36 times 2, that is going to give me 2 carry the 1, 72. So that's going to work. So that means that I'm going to have my whole number as 2, and then I need to figure out what part of my fraction is left. So in order to do that, I'm going to come back over here to where I'm doing all of my work. This is my work section. I'll take 92. I'm going to subtract 72, and that's going to give me 20. So now I have 20 over 36. Well, you know that I can reduce that. If I take 20 and I multiply it by 4, I get 5 left. And if I take 36 and I want to divide that by 4, rather, I get 9 left. So my new fraction is going to end up being 2 and 5 over 9. What's fabulous about this is that we know this is our rule of 9s. And we also know that anything over a 9 is that anything as a repeated decimal. So that means that our solution to this problem is 2.5 repeating. So either one of these would be acceptable, but that's one way to eliminate the whole big long division if possible. Pause this video and take a look at all of our work, come back, and let's do another problem. Okay, welcome back. Let's do the next problem together. We're gonna take 3.64, and that will become our numerator, all over top of 1.4. You can see that I've been very, very, very careful to line up my numbers, and this is the case where I have to add that zero so that I have equivalent zeros for each of my fractions. I have two 
and I have two, which is exactly what I want, which means that my giant one is going to end up being 100 over 100. So we want to multiply by 100 over 100, remembering that anything over itself is equal to the value of one, which does not change anything that we're doing. This ends up giving us 364 all over 140, which is great because now we can use the same process we used before. We can simplify before we get to the point of long division. I wanna make a guess that 140 times two is gonna get me as close as I can get. So 140 times two, let's fix that, is gonna be zero, eight, and two. So that's pretty close. So I think it's gonna be two, and then of course we need to figure out what we have left over. Let's figure out what we have left over. Here's our work section. I keep making it blue, I want it to be red. Work. We'll take 364, and we're gonna subtract out 280. It's gonna be four, carry the one, 84. So we are going to have two with 84 over 140. Okay, so now we have to start simplifying. I'm gonna to wanna to simplify this before I do any type of long division. Let's see, 84. I know that it's going to be some value of two, but I want to try to think about 140. Okay, so if I divide 84 by seven, I'm gonna get 12. And if I divide 140 by seven, I'm gonna get 20. So let's start there. So I have two, now I have 12 over 20, much more manageable. I know that I can keep going. I can divide the top and the bottom by four. So now I have two and three fifths, which is a much easier long division problem. So we'll come back over to our work place and we're going to have five divided by three. We add our zeros. We know that five goes into 36 times and voila, our answer is 2.6. So take a good look at this, see if it makes sense. I'll meet you on the next slide. Okay, let's try two more. My suggestion would be to try one and pause the video, do your work and then come back and see how you did and then do it again for the second one. So assuming that that's what you've done, let's get started. The first thing that we wanna do is we want to make a fraction out of our two decimals. So 13.96 as the numerator and 0 0.4 as the denominator. So hopefully you can see that we need to add that zero right there so that now we have our two on the top and our two on the bottom. Let's go ahead, we wanna multiply by our giant one. Again, that's going to be 100 over 100 this time. And then that's going to leave us with 1396, 1,396, all over 40. If you did not put this zero right here, you would be tempted to put it over four. Putting that zero forces you to remember that there's two numbers on the bottom that need to be moved over. So the next thing that we wanna do is we'll set up our workstation over here again. And we want to start to think about how many times 40 is going to go into 1,396. Okay, so a 40 times 30 is going to be 1,200. I think we could do better. What about 40 times 34? So that's really 34 times 4. Let's see, that's going to be 0, 016 and 0, 012. So that's going to give us... 0631. So that's pretty close. So we're going to go with good enough. And our first big whole number is going to be 34. And of course, we need to figure out what part of our fraction is left. So back to the work area we go. We are going to have 1396 minus 1360. And that is going to give us 36 on top. 36 on top. So we are going to continue to simplify. So we have 34 as our whole number, 36 and 40. Four can go into both of those. So that's going to give us 
9 tenths. And if you want to do that division, if you want to go, hope I don't know if you know what the answer is going to be, but I will do it for you. Put the zero here. That's going to be a 9, and that's going to be 90, and we're good to go. So our answer to this problem would be 34.9. you pause the video and take a look. Okay, let's move to the next problem. We will write it as a fraction, 7.68 over top of, again, 0 0.4. We are going to need to add that 0 in so that we know we have 2 on top and 2 on bottom. We're going to need to multiply by our giant 1, which is going to be 1,000 over 1,000. Excuse me, 100 over 100. That's our giant 1 we end up with 768 over top of 40. So how far do we think we're going to need to go? We'll set up our work area. Let's see, four times what is gonna give us as close as we possibly can to 768? I know the answer and it's gonna be 19, so we'll just do that. So zero and 36, zero, zero and four. 4, 0, 6, and 7. So 760. So that's pretty darn close. So we are going to be 19, and let's see what our remainder would be. Again, back to the work area. We have 768 minus 760. That's 8. So our top is 8, which is lovely, because that reduces to 19 and 1 fifth and need to erase that 19 and 1 fifth and do you know what 1 fifth is as a fraction that's the big question so we'll do the math just to check so 5 into 1.0 5 times 2 10 0 so that is going to reduce down to 19 Point two. Hopefully both of those made sense and you're ready to do your retake. Good luck.